this night with laying the foundation, so today is Unlearning the World. I thought I would open the book up and read a quote from the Course that's in here. What page you This is on page 227. It's a quote from chapter 15 of the Course. Can you imagine what it means to have no cares, no worries, no anxieties, but merely to be perfectly calm and quiet all the time. Yet that is what time is for, to learn just that and nothing more. Even rhymes. <laughs> so, I'm learning the world in order, in order to learn this perfect stillness we talked about yesterday, this choiceless awareness, then the unlearning the world is basically unlearning all concepts of the world and all those concepts have to do with safety, security, comfort, convenience. Um, you know, when you think about modern life, convenience seems to be something that, that is pretty sought after. You know, there's a lot of things and gadgets and devices that basically serve convenience. And convenience isn't, isn't of the spirit. Um, I would say ease is, divine ease. You know, there's, there is a flow, and that you are that flow, and that you can tell when you're in divine ease, because everything's so easy, and effortless, and joyful. And yet convenience is more um, trying to bring about ease in your life, through inappropriate means. And by that I mean by manipulating time and space, uh, or manipulating the world, where we're asked, you know, seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world, to really have a total shift in perspective, which brings you into that divine ease. And you might say the conveniences are more, well, it's more of kind of like fake it till you make it uh, kind of thing. <laughs> you know, it, it, that's why it's not really truly inspired. It's just, uh, it seems to have some value in a very temporary way, but it doesn't have lasting value. And we're going for that which is of lasting value. And the other thing is, is comforts. Um, it's not like the, the spirit is, is against comfort in any way because uh, the peace that passeth the understanding of the world that the Bible talks about is comfort. So that's comfort with a capital C. And Jesus had talked you know, to the woman at the well. Some of you remember the passage in the Bible, Drink of me and you will never thirst again. You could just say we reinterpret that. Find comfort in me and you will never be restless again. Find comfort in me, the Christ, and you will never have discomfort again. You will find your eternal comfort. Because without that kind of context, it just seems like that's, it's pretty harsh, actually. Like, well, I don't think comfort is so bad. Uh, but we're, we have to take, lift it up higher to like a divine comfort. A comfort that doesn't come and go. A comfort that's consistent. And in that sense, you can start to say, well, there is something that, that could be attractive about this divine comfort. Um, it fits in with that quote that I just read, about having no cares, no worries, no anxieties, but be perfect, be quiet and calm all the time. Um, so when we talk about unlearning the world, it's really a major convincing job for the Holy Spirit, because the ego has made up so many pseudo-comforts and pseudo-conveniences and substitutes for the real thing that it seems to the mind that's quite addicted to these comforts and conveniences and pleasures and so forth that, that it's actually, that heaven would actually require a sacrifice of something that's pretty good. Or even we could say something that's not all bad. 
And certainly, if you talk to anybody who has experiences with the world, they could possibly agree with you that it's not all bad. It's not all good, they might say, <laughs> but it's not all bad. And it's the not all bad part that, that keeps the mind from dropping the deception like a hot potato. I mean, think of it, you would, if it was all bad, <laughs> then the ego wouldn't have much of a chance of keeping you attracted to it or addicted to it. You would drop it very quickly. So that's part of the self-deception that, that makes it, that's what makes temptation so, so uh, seductive, so alluring. Mm -hmm.